Hi, my name's Kat Muir and I'm here with Cheap and Easy Eats and today I'm going to show you a really simple way to do kombucha. Now kombucha is something I absolutely love and adore. I tasted it the first time maybe about eight years ago and I was on a course and this girl was there and she brought in this bottle of brown liquid and she was like, I never travel anywhere without my kombucha. I was like, what's that? And she explained to me it was some kind of health energy kind of drink that you make out of tea. And when I tasted it, it just tasted like cider to me. It, it, tasted, it had a pleasant taste and it was, it was actually quite enjoyable. And the next day I felt absolutely full of energy and I thought, oh, okay, I need to find out more about kombucha. Now you can buy it in Sainsbury's and shops like that and it's, and it's fantastically available. But at that point in time, the only way you could really get it here was by making it yourself. So there's simple things that you need to make kombucha. You need to have a scoby, which is a yeast bacterial organism that looks a bit like a jellyfish, which I'll show you a little bit later. You can make it, it's kind of like yogurt, you need something to make it with. So you need a bottle of kombucha to make a scoby with. And then once you've got your scoby, then you can continue to make kombucha as much as you want. And I, mean, I use mine all the time. So it's fantastic. And the scoby actually keeps growing in layers and then you can sort of peel it off and then you've got another scoby. So you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them online as well, I believe. And if I find it, I'll post it in the links. So it's fairly simple, basic ingredients. All we need is water, which is fairly plentiful because we're in Scotland, and we need some tea bags. So we're working on the basis of about eight pints of water or four litres of water, approximately. And with that, we'll have 10 tea bags and 300 grams of sugar. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to boil the tea. So I like to use mostly green tea. I've did it in all sorts of different ways. The consistency is the same, whether you use 10 bags made up of eight green tea bags and two black tea bags, or whether it's all black tea bags, or whatever you've got in your cupboard. I've went through different scenarios of using really expensive quality tea bags and using cheap tea bags and I don't find the difference. I've went through using white, cheap, white, um, cheap white sugar and I've also went through using brown sugar and I've seen videos where they've used honey and it's, it's called Jura and I think it's a waste of honey, like personally. Uh, I think the results are absolutely delicious and fantastic just with cheap white sugar and your basic cheap tea bags. So the green tea bags I've got here are just a fairly cheap brand. We're just gonna put them in the pot and I've got two quite nice quality dark tea bags that my friend gave me and they come from Iran and they are like really nice tea and We'll add the water and then we'll get started, okay? So now that the tea has cooled enough that I can put my hand in, I'm just going to go in and really squeeze all that tea out. You want it to be really, really strong tea. And sometimes I kind of think, I wonder if it's just my imagination. You know, like, do I just imagine that this is, this is doing something when it's not actually doing anything? But when I've had friends over and they've had some kombucha, they've told me that they've felt like completely different the next day. So I don't think it's just my imagination. But even if it was, it's better than taking like fizzy drinks like Coca-Cola or fizzy orange juice or something like that. It's, it's healthier, it's a healthier option if you're fed up just drinking water. So it gives you something else that feels like you're getting something that, you know, ooh, it's a bit fizzy and, you know, and for me actually it tastes just like cider. It just has that sort of cidery taste 
and and I quite I quite enjoy that. Um, and it, it is it's a nice drink. So now that I've got all the tea bags out, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the sugar. Now I've weighed out 300 grams of cheap white sugar, and that's just going to go in. I'm going to stir it round until it dissolves. Now that should be it dissolved. I'm just going to have a look in and it's quite hard to see because it's so dark but once I pour it into the scoby if there's once it gets lower down in the pot then I'll be able to see if there's any if there's any sugar left. So this is my scoby. It's a yeast bacterial organism which I was telling you about earlier. You can see it's really thick. It's, um, you know, I've had it going for a while and I'm going to have to separate it soon. So when I'm doing that, we'll do another video and we can link it in the description here. But it's, it's quite simple. You can probably see it comes in in layers and when you're going to separate it, just sort of peel it apart. So for now, because it's such a thick scoby, it eats the sugar really, really quickly. So usually in about three days, that's, that's set it down. If it was a lot thinner than this, it could take seven to 10 days. So usually all I do is I put it in my sink because that makes it a bit lower. And then if I've got any spillage, it's a lot easier to clean up. And I'm just gonna take this. Now you have to do it when it's cool enough to put your hands in because if it's too hot, it will kill your scoby because your scoby's alive. We call him Stevie. Now I'm just having a look in my pot and that sugar was really well dissolved so there's nothing left in it. And um, sometimes if I don't have it because it's boiled down so much, I'm just going to put a little bit of cold water in and just top it up. If you had any excess sugar at this point that hadn't dissolved, you just put the water in and then you just dissolve it at this stage and then just pour it into the top, just like that. Now, you can see the colour of it and once this has changed and we're filming when it's ready in three days time, you'll see the colours different and it just goes that little bit lighter and, and you know it's ready because the scoby essentially is eating all the sugar out of the sweet liquid and then it poops out all the probiotic goodness. That, that's basically why it helps all your gut health. So I'm going to put this away now and we'll see you back in a few days time. So we're back after four days. We've let the kombucha settle with the scoby. You can see there's a little bit of a colour change. Because it was mostly green tea, that doesn't tend to change quite as much as if it's all black tea. But this is kind of a little bit lighter, it's more golden. So I'm going to taste it and make sure that it's not still too sweet, that it has actually transformed into what I'm looking for it to transform into. And then I'm going to add some fruit because I'm going to do a double fermentation process. So if this is okay, you could actually just have it as is. But what I like to do is I like it quite fizzy and I like it fruity flavored. So normally I'll add in some fruit and I'll leave it for another three or four days. So just now to start with, I'm just going to taste it. I have a little tap on the front of my jar, which makes it really easy. I quite like this jar. I can't remember where I got it. It was quite a long time ago, but I find it very easy with the tap and it holds a decent amount as well. I'm just going to let a bit of air in. So, you know, you can see that kind of colour. Mm, smells good. Mm. Yeah, that tastes nice. It's actually just perfect because it's not too sweet. 
um, but it's not like vinegar yet. So if you leave it longer, and some people do like the really vinegary kind of flavour, uh, I personally don't. I like it when it's just still a little bit sweet, but it doesn't taste like tea anymore. But if you prefer it to be more like vinegar at this stage, you'd maybe leave it for another day and then check it, and then maybe another day and check it. For me, that's fine. It is quite a large scoby. You can see there's lots of air bubbles. I used to keep it open and let the air flow through because when I first started doing this, that was one of the things all the people did. They'd put like a, like a cheesecloth on top or a tea towel and they'd cover it over so the air could get through. I actually found that all that happened was little fruit flies would just come and they absolutely loved it. And I had to throw a whole lot of, of scobies out. So now all I do is I just seal it down and it doesn't seem to make any difference, but you know, you guys can try it however you like. So that tastes really good. Mmm. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill up my jars. So they might look dirty. They're actually clean. It's just bits of scoby that have attached on the inside and I kind of Every sort of two or three uses, I put them through the dishwasher and just get them really sparkling. But I tend not to wash them in between because I think it gives everything a better flavour and it is just part of the, the scoby. So, you know, you will you will get that kind of build up happening. So I've got two jars and they take half each and I do this so that I can have a couple of different flavours. Now today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do strawberry and ginger and raspberry and ginger and both these kombuchas are really flavorful i really love the kick of ginger sometimes i just do strawberry on its own but actually the ginger is really good for you and it just gives it that extra bit of oomph the fruit has been frozen because sometimes when i get strawberries or raspberries or any kind of berries uh, and it doesn't always get eaten at the time or sometimes uh, my youngest one's a bit fussy and if the strawberries aren't quite sweet enough he won't, he won't eat them so then I'll just give them another wash, freeze them and then I know I can use them for kombucha. So any fruit that you've got that's coming up to the point of it's going to go off just chop it up, put it in some freezer bags, stick it in the freezer because the frozen fruit works really really well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my frozen fruit in here. So for this one, I'm going to do strawberry and ginger. So it's frozen, so I'm going to just lightly put it down so I don't smash the jar. And I've got five strawberries here and that gives you a really, really nice, very, very vibrant coloured kombucha. And I'm going to add ginger. So I've half the ginger between the two. Some people put the skins in. Personally, I don't like to do that. I have juiced the ginger before and just put the ginger juice in, which gives a very, very strong ginger taste. I've also grated it, and I don't really find there's a lot of difference between grating it and slicing it. Um, just more work if you're going to grate it, but not like a, a better flavor. If you don't get all the skin, that's okay. And it's very good for you too. It's very good for sore throats and you know coughs and colds and all sorts of stuff like that. The reason that I like to put the fruit in first is because I like it to really mix well with the kombucha. And frozen raspberries, even if they're all like crumbs, like some of mine are, doesn't matter. You get all that flavour and. Raspberry kombucha, raspberry and ginger is probably my favourite kombucha uh, and strawberry and ginger as well. I've done green apple, I've done mango and ginger, um, I've did grapes because sometimes we have some grapes left if they're not quite sweet enough and, uh, and they're all really nice. Now I've put the raspberries and the ginger in, I've got the strawberries and ginger in. All I'm going to do now is put the kombucha in. So I find it easier just to put it down a little bit lower and I'm just going to let it flow. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got raspberry and I've got ginger and all I'm going to do is leave these for about another three days and then I'm going to decant it into smaller bottles and I'll get about eight bottles between the two of them, eight of the regular size kombucha bottles that you would buy. And you can see there's my scoby now ready for its next lot. I only ever keep a small amount of liquid in, in the scoby to start off the next slot. I find if there's too much liquid it makes it very vinegary so I'll never keep a small amount in there and uh, you can see this big guy's like got an open mouth there ready for the next slot of tea to go in so he can scoff it but that's pretty much it's very easy and it really it's so it's so cheap to do really you've got the cost of 10 tea bags um, which the tea bags I use are fairly cheap tea bags. Uh, the green ones, certainly the green tea, I've tried all different types and I find that just the cheap one, it's like a pound for 50. So from that pound you get, you know, five lots if you're, if you're doing it with 10 tea bags. And um, the cost for doing eight bottles is, is pennies. It's really pennies, whereas if you buy it in the shops, it's about four pounds for a small bottle. So really, it's it's a great healthy way to, to do this. It doesn't take up a lot of time. And we'll come back in three days and we'll check on the rest of it. So we're back after another three days. This is our double fermentation. And what we've got now is strawberry and ginger and raspberry and ginger. So I'm going to show you what I do next. And you can see just by looking at them the gorgeous colours. I mean raspberry does give it a much redder kind of effect. But you can see it just looks so lovely. It's like a tropical sunset with the strawberry and ginger. And it's just really pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this through a sieve and into a jar and then I'm going to pour it into some old jars that I've got from when when I bought kombucha when I was out in the States. I brought them, I managed to bring them all back with me and cleaned them up and usually I just rinse them out because I don't drink out the bottle, I pour it into a glass, there's no bacteria from my mouth on them but then every two or three times I put them through the dishwasher. So I just use these. If you don't have bottles like that you can put it into a large bottle if you want it to be fizzy you want the bottles to be airtight I just tend to do it because it's quite a nice portion size it's about a pint in in each bottle so about half a liter so I quite like that um, you can buy some nice bottles from places like Ikea that are airtight and they're just large and you just pour it all in but I'm going to take the fruit out now and decant it into the bottles. So I'm going to start with the strawberry one. You'll see it actually looks like it's a bit fungusy and, and not very pleasant, but that's just the scoby is still in here in, in all the liquid and it's just eaten through all the sugars as well. And that's what makes it fizzy. So I'm going to be quiet and you can hear it go tss. That's, that's all our fizziness. So all I usually do at this stage is I just squish up the strawberries just to get all that extra strawberry juice out. You can see all the fizz. It smells gorgeous. I mean, sometimes kombucha can have a little bit of a smell about it, but it actually smells very fruity and very strawberry and it's very fizzy and all that ginger's in there. Mmm, <laughs> can't wait to have a taste. So what I'm going to do now is just pour it into here and this sieve will just catch any bits of strawberry and ginger and things like that. So I put it into the bottles. I like to use 
a little funnel. I find it's just easier, although it will fizz up quite a lot. It just smells so lovely and fresh. I, just, I can't wait to taste it. I'll put as much as I can in the bottles first so that I don't lose all that fizz. And then it, it will get fizzier. If you have it in the light, then it'll get fizzier quicker. If you put it in the fridge, then it'll last for a bit longer. In these bottles, I uh, know when it's um, getting really fizzy because the top expands. So on the top of the bottle where it's, it's perfectly flat, when it's got a lot of fizz, it kind of bumps up a little bit and you can kind of press it down. And at that point, you know that you have to, <laughs> you have to totally uh, undo the top and let the air out. So I'm just squeezing all the rest of all that lovely flavour and juice out of here. And then the remainder of this, you can either put it in the bin or in your compost heap, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll just always leave a tiny little bit of space at the very top of the jar. You can see it better on the clear one. And then I'll put these in the, in the fridge. So you can see there's just that little bit of space at the top. You can see all the fizziness. And you know, it's so nice to make it yourself because you know exactly what's going on with it. And it's certainly a, a cheaper way to do it because if you buy a bottle of kombucha in the UK, it's about £3.50, £4.50, depending on what type you get. And you just don't know what's going on with it, what's in it, how long it's been sat. I mean, they're very tasty, don't get me wrong. For less than that, you can make eight bottles. So I've not filled this one up fully because I want to have a taste. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. It's just such a lovely, fruity, fresh flavour. And actually, you have a clean kind of taste in your mouth. Like if I take, not that I've had it for a long time, but when I used to drink Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, sometimes uh, I would get the wrong one and it would be the sugary one. And you could kind of taste it. Like it had a different feel in your mouth. And this one, it's just so clean. Like the scoby has ate all the sugar and you know that this is something that's good for you. And there's roughly about 60 calories in a pint of kombucha. So for one of these bottles, it's about 45 to 60 calories. So all that sugar has gone. And if you compare that to, to like, you know, a fizzy drink, then you're talking about, you know, 400 calories for the same amount of liquid because of all the sugar. And this is all probiotic goodness. So I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my raspberry one. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. So I'm going to put this in. And again, you'll hear all the gas and it, it doesn't look very attractive to look at it like this you can see it all fizzing up now mm, smells really good so I'm just going to do the exact same thing again and you can see the raspberries have all lost their color the same way as the strawberries because all that colors went in here and I'm just going to mash that through <laughs> it kind of feels funny and sometimes I mash the fruit up before I put it in. It's just that this fruit was frozen, so I just stuck it straight in. I'm just gonna put this in my little pile to take out the compost. Actually, I'm gonna have a quick sip of this just now because it just it smells so good. Mmm, <laughs> it's a lovely fizz in it as well. Mm. Oh, that's just, it's such a lovely taste of raspberry. And it's just a hint of ginger. It's so delicious. Mm. I love kombucha. And if I'm getting to about four bottles, then I'll, I'll make another batch because I usually drink at least a bottle a day, sometimes more. And I find if I take it in the morning, it just gives me a lot of energy all day. The raspberry and ginger is lovely. The ginger flavor is very light. If you want a stronger flavor of ginger, then you could juice it and that will give it a much stronger flavour and it's almost like a fruity ginger beer. 
And it just kind of depends if you like ginger beer. Now, you can see there's a little bit left. And I drank some. <laughs> but this has gave me... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's a half a bottle, which would have been eight, except I've drunk, <laughs> I've drunk some, and uh, I'm going to just have to finish this off because it'd just be like that. <laughs> so you can see that for about less than £1.50, you've now got eight pints of kombucha, eight full bottles, and each one of these bottles in the shops would cost you between £3.50 and £4. So even if you take it as £4, then that would cost you £32 to buy eight bottles. And for £1.50, you've just made that. So that's a, a massive saving for a really nice drink and for something that you can put your own flavours into. So I really hope you give this a go and send me some comments and if you want to see how to make your own scoby that's maybe the next video that we'll do and we'll link that in the description so cheers thanks for watching